In Star Citizen, it's become common that we see virtual spaceships sold for hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars. But what is it about the Aegis Sabre Raven that makes this single pilot ship warrant a nearly $1,500 price tag? To answer that question, I'll take you through my own recent quest to acquire a Raven and a bit of the Raven's Star Citizen history. In Star Citizen lore, the Raven exists as a variant of Aegis Dynamics space superiority fighter, the Sabre. The original Sabre variant is known for its light footprint, impressive weapons loadout, and ability to rapidly respond to a battlefield and exert air superiority. The Raven variant is special that in addition to its weapons and stealth bonuses, it can also utilize two EMPs stored in its missile racks to disable enemy ships. CIG first revealed the Raven concept at CitizenCon 2017, and it was announced that the ship would be exclusively available through a partnership between Intel and CIG that would see codes for the ship included with purchases of the Intel Optane 900P SSD. In 2017, the 280GB model of this SSD carried an MSRP of around $400 USD, and the 480GB model of the SSD carried an MSRP of about $600 USD. At the time, these prices were about four times more expensive than regular consumer-grade SSDs, but the performance gains were noticeable and undeniable. That said, Star Citizens picking up these SSDs were getting great hardware along with what would one day become one of the most expensive and rare ships in all of the verse. I've been a backer since 2016, and while I've built a very impressive fleet that has gotten me into the Chairman's Club, it's now 2022, and I had recently been regretting not getting a Raven back when I originally had the chance. I started the research if it was still possible to find the original Intel SSDs containing the Raven codes, and to my surprise, there were some recent success stories on Reddit despite Intel's own page on the promotion stating that the disbursement of those codes was ended in 2018. One recent Reddit thread mentioned Newegg as a possible source for the Intel SSDs, so I made this my first stop on my search. Unfortunately, Newegg stated they were out of their own direct stock, but they did list additional third-party sellers with stock that all listed the conditions of the SSDs as new, and the product pages even contain the same Star Citizen promotional language on Newegg's own product page. I went ahead and took a chance with a seller and purchased an SSD for just under $600 with me thinking that the worst that can happen being that there would be no code and I would simply be a little inconvenienced by having to spend some time going through a return and refund process. To my surprise, within hours of placing my order, I received an unprompted email from the seller from Newegg apologizing that if I was buying the SSD for the Star Citizen ship code that it was not available and I could go ahead and cancel my order at that time, which of course I did. Now with the easy option seeming to be impossible at this point, I knew I would have to turn to the gray market if I ever wanted to have a raven in my hangar, but I was not at all prepared for what I would find. On one popular gray market site, the Impound, I found that they were all sold out of their Ravens and that their original listed price was just under $1,500 USD. I also looked on Reddit and Star Foundry, but could find no Ravens actively listed for sale at all on these sites. On Star Hangar, I was able to find two of these incredibly rare ships for sale, but each of them were listed for sale for again, $1,500. To cut to the chase, I didn't want to pay $1,500 I continued my search and eventually I was able to find a reputable seller on Reddit that did have a Raven in their private collection that they were willing to part with for what I considered to be more than a fair price and I could happily say I did not pay over a thousand dollars for my Raven. Now with my quest to acquire the Raven complete, it was time to head over to Urkel.Games and decide on a loadout. My plan after all is not just to be a collector and keep the Raven in the hangar. I do want to go out and actively bounty hunt with it when I like to take a break from the easy mode button that is currently using the Eclipse and the equally predictable dominance of the Gladius. I took a unique approach to my Raven's loadout and stripped out all of the stealth components. My thoughts here being that the Raven still has a generous stealth bonus that is built directly into the model 
that gives it a 20% reduction across its EM, IR, and cross-section signatures without any stealth components even being equipped. This gives us a little bit more room to strengthen up our shields and other components. I left the two stock size 3 laser cannons as these are great for the gameplay style the Raven needs of being able to quickly come into the battlefield, bring down enemy shields, and then deploy as EMP to disable systems. Moving to our two size 1 shields, I swapped these out for FR66 due to their high HP and being able to get back to fully charged shields in right around 10 seconds. Later in this video, the gameplay footage used is from when I was experimenting with the Palisade shields, but ultimately I found the higher HP of the FR66 shields was a better option since you'll spend a lot of time in close distance to your targets if you want to have an effective range to deploy your EMP strikes. For our two size 1 power plants, I went with the JS300, and finally for the Quantum Drive, I swapped to the Atlas as I like to spend as much time possible chain and balance together before needing the dock at a station for refueling. With the loadout covered, let's see how the Raven performs against a couple bounty targets and their friends. And citizens, just one thing to note as we're on the way to the bounty here. Um, if you look at my power management items on the bottom right MFD, you'll see that I have overclocked both of those GS300 shields as well as both the EMPs to make sure that we're doing as much damage as possible and keeping ourselves as strong as possible to stay in these fights. Okay, and I'll go ahead and provide commentary on this engagement. Set off a quick ping there just so I can get an overview of the environment below just because sometimes the altimeter showing your altitude isn't always accurate. Flaring off a missile here. Uh, you can also see in the top right hand corner I already have the EMPs charging. I charge both at the same time um, because I don't, I don't remember exactly which patch but over the last few patches a CIG reduced the distortion output from these. Uh, real quick here so I've taken the shields down on that Avenger. I just shot off the EMP if you look on the target display here on this uh, top right MFD, you can see that the EMP was effective as all the emissions from that enemy ship are dropping drastically. So systems are offline currently. You can see they just shot back up um, in the emissions, which means that it came online. And there's the boom as I took that guy out. Um, one of the strategies I was using here, I'm really just kind of peppering these guys because I'm trying to test out the EMP. So the Raven has more than enough firepower to just take these eyes out completely with the weapons hard points. But in order for the EMP to be effective, you need to take the shields down first. So you want to take the shields down first, be greater than 150 meters, less than 750, and you should be okay against most small to medium ships. But as I said, due to that reduction in distortion damage recently from CIG, larger ships are going to require multiple detonations of, uh, of the EMP. And again here I was actually surprised that the EMP was effective. If you actually go back and watch that uh, footage, I was at about 140 meters when I shot that off against the enemy ship, but it still was effective. You can see here in the, in the target display on that MFD that the emissions did drop. So overall, absolutely, you know, this I believe was a MRT that I was doing. I've gotten pretty successful doing, I would say, up until about HRTs. At that point, it becomes a bit more of a challenge. And I, I won't even say challenge. The Raven is a great ship, honestly. I don't know why people complain about it, but the challenge is just that those engagements become longer because, again, you have to get off multiple at those EMP blasts at that point. Whereas against these smaller and medium ships, you can just do it once and the systems are going to go offline. Uh, but still, it's a great ship. It's just that once you get up into that higher tier, you know, the HRTs, ERTs, I'm personally, I use my Eclipse, but I'm happy to have the Raven in my hangar now because it gives a great alternative uh, to that ship. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy the channel, it's, it's pretty brand new. Um, yeah, I think I have two subscribers currently just because on my other channel that's devoted to the Microsoft Flight Simulator content that my company develops, uh, so on this channel, I'll be uploading all the Star Citizen content, which is, you know, just kind of what I do in my fun free time. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Give the video a like, share it, and hope to see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves.